Come to a seat in the middle of your mat. And you're gonna sit in a Sukhasana pose, which is an easy pose. So think about just placing one ankle in front of the other. So you just got a lot of support. If that doesn't quite feel comfortable, maybe you'll crisscross applesauce your legs. Maybe that works. I prefer this way. And you can either take the seat that feels a little bit more natural or flip it out and have a little bit more balance in a way that you might not have normally. Turn off my phone. <laughs> Place your hands on your thighs. If, it if your hands reach your knees comfortably, that's fine. If that's not quite right, you might shrug your shoulders back and find that your hands come up along your thighs a little bit. Allow your eye gaze to soften. Maybe that even means allowing your eyelids to close. And take a few moments simply to settle into this moment. Allow yourself the opportunity to really let go of everything that's happened today, this week, this year. We don't have too many opportunities to truly do that. Tasks take our attention. We want to give our attention to people, to things. But for right now, you can allow yourself to let that fall away and just take a moment to simply be with your breath. Simply exist in your body, even if it's only for this one moment. And with that same awareness of this one moment, start to just take an inventory of your body, how things feel. So just noticing, is there any place in your body that feels tight or achy or stiff or warm or spacious or porous or kind of loosey-goosey? Just an awareness, just know where you are. And then take a moment to simply recognize things like the temperature of your air, of the air on your skin. Is it different in different places of your body? What's that like? As you breathe, can you feel the fabric of your clothing shift? If so, where? Is that something you notice normally? And then also send some attention to that breath, maybe also recognizing the way that it changes the way that your clothing moves. Maybe you've got shifts in your body as it happens. And so as you inhale, notice how your rib cage expands on all sides. And it feels like breath could go all the way down through your belly, through your hips. And then as you exhale, how there's a reverse path. It feels like everything is coming upward. You can feel your rib cage and your belly pull in slightly. And maybe you sit up a little bit taller on your exhales. Continue that mindful breathing. And attempt to soften the muscles in your face. Once again, loosen the grip on thoughts that start to surround you. And float by. And then I'd like to invite you to set a dedication or intention for this practice if this is something that resonates with you. Perhaps simply being available, simply being a witness, or if there's something else that speaks to you, please do that. This might be a dedication to someone, something, a concept, an ideal, or to yourself. You are absolutely a worthy recipient of your dedication, I promise you. We're gonna take a couple breaths together as community as we seal these intentions and dedications. Take a very deep breath in, feel that expansion everywhere. Forehead is soft, come to the very top of that inhalation at that mountain, that peak, hold for a moment on an exhale, release. So all the breaths come out, start to feel the valley of that breath, just that instant, then take another deep breath in, draw in everything that supports your intention and dedication. And on the exhale, let it go. And then one more cycle of breath on your own or yourself.
And then with your eyes opened or closed, you might find some place in between. You always feel free to close your eyes if you'd like. I'm gonna take a few gentle twists. I'm not gonna mirror you because I'll always mess up my lefts and rights. So you can either listen to my voice or you can mirror me. On an inhale, reach your arms out and up. Shoulder blades drop down, maybe gaze up towards your hands. And on an exhale, twist to your left. Your right hand is to your thigh or knee. Left fingertips behind you come to spider fingers. Inhale, lift up a little bit taller. Shift the weight towards your right hip slightly and exhale, twist through your belly, through your chest, and then send your chin to gaze beyond your left shoulder. See if you can still find those deep inhalations and exhales. Again, noticing the way that your body shifts as you breathe. Then on your next inhale, you're gonna circle back to center, arms lift once again. Again, shoulders reach down. If your palms face together, this helps that action. Exhale, twist to the right. Same but different. Left hand to right thigh, right fingertips behind you. Shift your weight slightly to your left hip because you naturally shift in the other direction. Twist at belly. Twist at mid back. Even here, can you start to slide your shoulder blades toward each other? It's a very small movement. Sitting your chin like it's going to go over your right shoulder. Drop the muscles in your forehead a bit. And then on an inhale, cycle back to center, arms lift once again, palms lift, gaze up. This one time on an exhale, we're going to just take it all the way to the exhale, all the way to the end of that breath. And then on the inhale, take it back to center. Exhale, twist to the right. All the way to the end of the exhale. Once more on either side, your own breath. That last inhale, reach your arms up toward the ceiling, press your palms together. On an exhale, bring your hands down to your heart center. Lay your eyes about, follow your thumbs, so eventually you're looking down towards your chest. And then your voice gets weird like that. Take your hands to your knees. We're gonna take a gentle forward fold. That doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. Um, I often find that this pose, even though there's not a lot of effort involved, it can get kind of intense. So whichever way you've chosen your feet, Look it out the other way, unless that's just not working for you and find what does. You're basically going to slump forward, okay? So you might find that you need to use your arms for support. You might find that you're comfortable enough that you can just drop your head. Notice if it's comfortable to leave your palms rested up, drop your head down. I know it might feel awkward, so if you need to kind of like shift so you feel supported, you can do that. And if you're like, absolutely not, take your fists and then make a little power with them and then stick your forehead on your fists. Find long inhales and exhales. Notice if there's any tension that creeps in. And see if on your exhales you can simply release that. If your palms are face up, flip them down to the mat once again, and then Keeping your head heavy, walk your hands back in towards you, rounding your spine, and then you'll eventually stack all the way up until your head comes all the way up so your head is over your shoulders. You're going to take a, little, a couple uh, neck stretches here. So reach your right arm up and over so your fingers will tap above your uh, left ear, and then simply drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. On an exhale, cycle your chin down until your chin is just about above your, uh, in line with your sternum. Inhale, rock it back to the right. Once more like that, exhale takes you down. Inhale, takes you back to the right. Take your right hand to the outside of your head to lift yourself back up. And then take your left arm out and up. Hands on your head above your ear. Drop the left shoulder down to left ear. Left shoulders running away. Stay here for the inhale, exhale, cycle your chin all the way down in an arc until your chin is in line with your sternum. Inhale, rock it back. Your arm is just providing a little bit of weight, not too much tug, exhale back to center. Inhale, take it back to the left once again. And then take your hand to the outside of your head to lift yourself up. All right, next time, inhale, reach your arms out and up. And you're going to flip your hands away from each other. This is kind of weird and then press your palms together. Yes, just like that, okay. So from here, on an inhale, you're going to straighten your arms, maybe even look up, that helps. 
And then on an exhale, keeping your palms together, start to draw your elbows out. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, press your palms together as you bring your elbows away from each other. One more time like that. Exhales, draw down. And then you're going to simply switch your hands around so the opposite wrist is in front. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, bring your elbows away from each other while you press your palms together. You might find a stretch in your forearms as well as in your triceps. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, draw out, maybe upper back. Inhale, lift up. Final time like that, elbows draw out. And then unravel your hands, take your hands to your knees. Cool. You're gonna roll over onto your hands and knees. You might need to set your, uh, your pillow to the side unless your knees are sensitive, in which case you do wanna place them under your knees. You can also roll your yoga mats um, up so you kind of double it up. So in your hands and knees, you've got a tabletop position. Make sure you've got wrists below shoulders and elbows and knees below hips. We're gonna take some traditional cow and cat poses. On an inhale, drop your belly, lift up your hips and heart gaze up. Fingertips are spread wide. Exhale, press your hands and knees, arch your back, look back towards your knees or even your belly. Your toes don't have to be tucked or untucked, whatever feels best for your feet. Inhale, drop your belly, inner elbows face forward. Exhale, press through your hands and knees, arching your spine, look back beyond your knees. Inhale, slid your heart forward again. I like to bend my elbows when I come down to make sure that my shoulders aren't getting any achiness in them. Exhale, press up, look back towards your knees. One more time, just like that. Inhale, lots of space to the front of your body. Tilt your pelvis up toward the ceiling. Exhale, point your tailbone down toward the ground. Forehead down toward the ground as well. And then come back to a neutral posture. So you're back to that tabletop pose. Uh, next pose we're going to take is a thread the needle. So place a little bit of weight to your left palm. Peel your right fingertips up toward the ceiling. We're going to stay here for a moment. Really press through your left hand. Reach up your right fingertips. It's a really deep stretch. On an exhale, thread your right arm underneath you. So your back of your hands to the mat of the floor. Come to your right shoulder and then your cheek down to the mat. You can simply stay right here. If you know that you'd like a little bit more stretch on the left side of your body, you're going to tiptoe your fingers out in front of you with your left hand, come up onto spider fingers. This might be plenty plenty. If you want to get into some other muscles, for me, this goes across my chest. Um, in my body, it's really tight. I'm gonna walk my hand also over to my right corner of my mat. So I'm angled across my body and my bicep is over my face. Wherever you are, if you're taking those extensions, make sure you're on your finger pads. Continue to breathe. If there's some place in your body that is holding that attention that doesn't need to, maybe your right hand. Give yourself permission to release. All right, if you took that arm extension, slowly start to tiptoe those left fingertips back down until your left palm is below your left shoulder. Press through left hand, peel right fingertips up toward the ceiling. We're gonna stay in this open twist. Exhale, hand down toward the mat, back to that tabletop position. We're gonna take one round of cow and cat. Inhale, drop belly, lift up hips and heart, gaze up. Exhale, press through hands and knees back to that cat pose, arch spine. Come back down to neutral. And we're gonna take that other version, okay? So more weight to your right palm, left fingertips point up towards the ceiling. Really press the right palm, even wrap inner elbows toward the front of the room. And then on your next exhale, you're going to thread your left arm underneath you. Back of left hand to the mat, left shoulder to the mat, and then your left cheek to the mat as well. Here you have those same options you had on the first side. You might wiggle your right hand out, Come up onto finger pads. This might feel just fine. If you want to take it even further, if you do on the other side, you're seeking equality. You're going to tiptoe the fingers across your mat toward the left corner. Press up with your fingers. See what you can release. What can you find softness in?
If you took that arm extension variation, start to carefully tiptoe your fingers back and then back so that your right hand is below your right shoulder. Press through that right palm, left fingertips swirl up, open arm twist. We'll stay here for just a little bit. And then on an exhale, take your hands down toward the mat. We're going to start to work on our wrists a little bit. Um, we've talked a lot about sitting in on conference calls all day long, so I think that most of us have spent a lot of time on our um, our phones and our keyboards. So you're going to start to walk your fingertips away from you. Sound effects will help. You might come all the way around where your fingers are facing your knees and your wrists are in front of you. If it's not quite there, it's okay. And then if you want a little bit more intensity, you're going to shift your weight back very, very, very gently. You'll feel a stretch very likely across your wrists, forearms, even the tops of your hands. Be really nice to yourself, be gentle. I did this the other day and I was sore for like a day, so you know, it's a real thing. All right, then shift your weight forward once again. Tiptoe your hands like you kind of like waddled them from side to side until your fingertips are facing towards the front of the room once again. Cool. All right, now we're gonna do same but different. You're going to flip the tops of your hands onto the mat, fingertips facing toward you, so your wrist is facing down toward the mat this time, okay? All right, it's gonna get weird. Bend your elbows out like a bulldog. So, <laughs> no chaturanga, like normally that, go out. Your fingers are back to you. Bring your hands into fists. It's a little bit hard to do. And then, keeping your hands as fists as best you can, start to straighten your elbows. You might not get very far. Again, it is intense. Be kind. Maybe you can straighten them a little bit more. Maybe you can squeeze your hands in. All right, start to bend your elbows back to where they began. Unfurl those fists. Come off of the tops of your hands. <laughs> and then come back to sit on your knees or to sit on uh, your prop, whatever feels okay for you. And then just move your wrists in circles. Abracadabra in one direction. Abracadabra the other direction. All right, wonderful. Come back onto your hands and knees, newfound feeling in wrists, and like you really might feel some soreness in your forearms. You're gonna lower yourself all the way down to your mat. So what helps here is if you walk your knees back a bit, elbows back, belly in, lower all the way to your mat. Keep your elbows in tight, yes. Okay, we're going to take a cobra pose here. So make sure the tops of your feet are pressed into the mat. You're pressing even through your pinky toes. Bring your elbows up toward each other. Slide your shoulder blades up and back. We're going to take a traditional cobra first. So imagine that you're pulling your hip tips up toward your ribs. This helps engage your belly. On an inhale, pressing through your feet and drawing your hands back, start to lift your way up. You've got your gaze just a little bit behind, beyond your yoga mat. Continue to breathe, maybe using your hands. Draw back on your mat like you're going to crinkle it up. You might feel your body shift a bit. Keep pressing to the outsides of your pinkies, pinky toes. Exhale, release down. Take your right cheek to the mat. Let your feet flop out to the side. Maybe even wiggle your hips from side to side if that helps. We're going to take that traditional version once again. Send your chin back to the front of the room. Again, pressing through tops of feet. Maybe your kneecaps lift up. Elbows toward each other. Shoulder blades up and back, inhale, lift up, draw your hands back. Even though this is a gentle class, if you know this is something that you want to strengthen the back of your body, you can feel free to lift your hands up and away from the mat, or you can leave them down. Why did you show up? What did you come for? Exhale, release everything. Left cheek to the mat, let your heels drop out to the sides, even maybe let your elbows splay out or maybe arms alongside your body. And then we're gonna take a backwards breath cobra. So we're gonna start kind of the same. So tops of feet to the mat, 
but instead of your hands alongside your body, you're going to take your hands a little bit wider than your mat, elbows out, okay? Spider fingers. So you've got your elbows out, spider fingers, legs are the same. So like I said, it's a backwards breath. So instead of an inhale coming up, we're gonna start on the exhale. So first, forehead down to the mat, press through tops of feet, even your shoulder blades are back, active fingertips. Inhale, prepare, low belly draws in. Exhale, press through tops of hands and feet, roll up. Inhale, unfurl, deep breath in, keep pressing through tops of feet. Exhale, wave your spine all the way back down until your forehead hits once again. Again, inhale, prepare. Draw your belly in for strength. Exhale, press through hands and tops of feet. Head is heavy, roll up. Inhale, unravel. Exhale, wave it all the way back down. Twice more, your breath. And then after that second exhale, draw your hands a little bit closer in towards your body. Press up to hands and knees. And we'll take a child's pose. So take a knees a little bit wider, toes toward each other, and then shift your hips back. If this doesn't feel great on your hip flexors, you can always take your knees together. For me, it's day to day. I never know. Let your head drop down. We're gonna take a soft child's pose. So you can have a bend to your elbow, and again, if this doesn't feel very comfortable, create a little tower with your fists and put your forehead on top of your fists. Come back to the breath that you cultivated at the very beginning. Maybe take another inventory of what's happening in your body. Release any tension that has decided to take up residency. On your next inhale, lift up about halfway, and you're gonna wander your torso and your arms over to the left. Um, if you've got some twistiness in you, you might find that your belly is kind of on top of your right thigh. Reach your left arm out, come up on the spider fingers once again, wrap the inner elbow up toward the ceiling, and as you claw at the ground here, pull your left hip toward your left heel, and maybe even drop your left shoulder about half an inch. Next inhale, lift up about halfway. Keep it low, you're gonna cycle around towards the front, take it over to the left. So again, if you've got some twisty flexiness here, you might find your belly is kind of on top of your thigh. Give it to the inside. You're good, you're good. Keep your right hand coming out, come up onto slider fingers. Inner elbow wraps up, this helps draw your shoulder blades away from you. Drop your head, get low. And if you're looking for more intensity, claw at the ground with your right fingertips. Drop your right shoulder about half an inch. Draw your right hip toward your right heel. Take the pose out of your forehead. On your next inhale, lift up about halfway. Take it back towards center. Come up onto your hands and your knees. Realign your shins. Uh, so that they're parallel to each other. And you're back in that tabletop pose. I'm gonna take a knee down lunge here. So you're going to reach your right foot forward and then place your foot between your hands. This might take a couple steps. You might use your right hand to bring your foot up. Make sure that your knee is over your, uh, your ankle. Inhale, lift up. Wrap your arms back, or sorry, your shoulders back. Wrap your pinkies toward each other. Notice if you're starting to like splay out, and if so, pull your hips in towards your ribs slightly so you've got lots of strength here. If you'd like a little bit more, you can shift your hips forward. Just make sure that you're pulling your right heel towards your left knee. Come out of that depth if you took that extra posture. We're gonna take half splits. So you're gonna start to straighten your right leg. Your hands are gonna come down to your mat. If your knee is bent, stay where you are. If your leg goes straight, wiggle your right foot forward until your hips are over your knee. Flex your foot towards your face. Again, straight knee, bent knee, doesn't matter. Inhale, lift up, reach your heart towards your toes. Feel your right hip pull back. Maybe even take your hand to your right hip crease. And on an exhale, 
You're going to start to bow down, like you're reaching your chin for your shin. Keep the flexion to your toes. Breathe through it. And then you're going to start to re-bend into that front knee. And then wiggle your foot back until you come back to that hands and knees posture. Come back onto your palms. You're going to take one round of cow and cat. Your cow comes on an inhale. Point your hips upward. Reach your heart forward like that cobra pose. Gaze up. And on a breath out, press your hands and knees. Arch your spine. Look back towards your feet. Then come back to that neutral spine. We'll take left side. You're going to walk your left foot forward. Place your left foot to the inside of your left thumb. Again, take your left foot with your hand if you'd like. Make sure you've got knee stacked over ankle. Your back toes can be tucked or untucked. It's ever going to make you feel more secure. And when you're ready, inhale, lift up. Wrap pinkies toward each other. If it's tough on your shoulders, become a little bit wider here. <clears throat> Oh my gosh, did you hear my bones just break? Anyway, if you would like, you can stay here. If you want to go a little bit further, you'll start to dip your hips down. Just make sure that you're pulling your left heel towards your right knee. This is just creating a lot of stability. On your next exhale, you're going to take your hands down to the mat, come out of that bend. We're going to take that half split to Adha Hanumanasana once again. So, if your knee is bent, you're good to go. If your leg comes straight, wiggle your left heel forward so you've got a little bit more space, hips over knee, flex your left toes towards your face. Inhale, lift up in the way. Give yourself space, your left hip pulls back. You might start to feel a stretch here already. On an exhale, you're gonna to start to bow down, reaching your chin for your shin. Keep your toes flexed. Back toes are tucked or untucked, whatever feels good. If you're not sure where to put your hands, you wanna still have them generally where uh, below where your shoulders are. Breathe deeply. All right, re-bend into the front knee. Take your hands with you for support. And then you're going to heel toe, wiggle your left foot back so you come back to the tabletop pose. If you want to stay in your finger pads for cow and cat, you can or just slide all the way down to your palms. Inhale, drop belly. Hips and heart are up, gaze is up. Exhale, arch your spine, fingertips still spread wide, send your gaze back. And then simply press your hips back and come up onto your knees. We're just gonna flip around, so however that feels good for you. Maybe you got some like fancy moves you wanna try out. Not doing anything fancy. All right, we're gonna take a Supta Baddha Konasana. So, Start with uh, your knees bent, feet into the mat. I like to have my hands behind me for just a little bit of support. I'm gonna start to walk the soles of my feet together until my knees come wide. Okay. I'm going to start to lean back like I'm gonna be watching TV or something. Once you get to the point where about your forearms are on your mat, press to the outsides of your feet, lift up your hips, and then tuck your tailbone down once more. This might give you a little bit of extra space in your low back. So if you don't get creaky low back, that might be good. Start to walk yourself all the way down until you're fully on your mat. If this is just really, really not working for you, simply place your feet on the mat or you can place something underneath your knees. It can be a very intense posture. Options here, if you would like, you can place your hands to the insides of your thighs for a little bit extra weight. You'd like to guide your knees down and away. Or if you'd like to choose something else, you might choose to place your hands on your belly or one hand on your heart or perhaps both hands on your chest. This is up to you. Just like we did at the beginning of this class, in this posture that's quite different from the way that we started, Start to take an inventory of how things feel, the temperature of the air on your skin, the way your clothing feels as you breathe. What other sensory stimuli are you picking up?
Can you hear ambient hums? And can you allow those sounds to simply exist? Do you have long breath? And then take your hands to the backs of your thighs for a little bit of an assist. And you're going to start to walk your feet back in toward your mat so your knees come up toward each other. Take your feet a little bit wider, not quite as wide as your mat, and then simply knock your knees toward each other. Really, really gentle. Your hands can stay to your thighs or they can stay to another place where we begin. And then roll over onto one side and then press your way up to seated. We're gonna do a tiny bit of core work here. I know it's a gentle yoga class. It's still important for all these poses. So just like we started, we were gonna go into that posture. You got feet onto the mat, knees bent, hands to the backs of your thighs. Lean back until you can start to feel your belly engage a bit. You can stay right here. This is core work. If you like to take it a little bit further, you can bring your shins up so they're parallel to the ground. Make sure that if you start to slump forward, you find a bit of that cobra pose here. Continue to breathe, keep your head lifted. And if you want a little bit more still, you can simply bring your arms out in front of you. So, Focus on your breath. This isn't so much about how long you can hold a plank or anything like that. How soft can you make this posture? And you can, can you find an economy of energy here? If you've taken your hands away, take them back to your thighs. If you've taken your feet up, drop them to the mat. We'll all pull forward, wrap your arms around your shins, and then drop your head towards your knees. Get soft, let go. And start to lift your way up. And you're gonna extend your legs out in front of you. First, we'll take a Dandasana posture. So again, your legs might not come straight. Um, that's perfectly fine. You'll still flex your toes towards your feet, shrug your shoulders back, bring your arms alongside you. If you're like me, your arms aren't super long. And so my arms don't like really touch the mat, that's fine. You're going to flex through your feet so your toes come back towards your face. If your legs are straight, you might find your heels come up off and away from the mat. So find that core engagement that we just had. Can you sit straight up, shoulder blades, resting back, lift up through the crown of your head, even active fingertips here, even if your hands don't touch the mat. Two more breaths. And that second exhale, release, get soft, maybe slump a little bit. Keep your left leg extended. We're gonna take a Jami Shirsasana pose. So bend your right knee, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you're gonna place the sole of your right foot into your left thigh. So your knee is out to the side. We just wanna make sure that you're not at your knee joint. So just a little bit higher than that, that's not working, then a little bit lower than that. You might need to wiggle around your thighs, your bum a bit, again, Left leg, toes are flexed, whether your knee is bent or fully straight. On an inhale, lift up, then pivot your torso over your leg and reach your arms for your foot, doesn't matter where they land. Yes, then inhale, lift up halfway once again, get out of your pose, and then on an exhale, you're going to reach your heart for your toes once again. So take a few breaths here with your head lifted. And then allow your head to get heavy and take a few breaths <laughs> with your head dropped. Continue the flexion through your left toes.
On your next inhale, lift up about halfway again. And then exhale, break the pose. Keep your legs as they are. We're gonna take a side variation to this. So inhale, reach your arms out and up once again, but instead of turning to the left, you're going to square your chest more kind of like in front of you. So like for me, it's not quite over my right knee. It's kind of in the middle. And you're going to start to arc over to the left. Again, your leg might be bent, might be straight. Your hand lands where it does. Can you leave your palm up? Start to wrap your left rib cage up toward the ceiling. This already is intense. <laughs> this is pain. And then if you like, reach your right arm up over your head. As you do that, can you keep your right shoulder away from your ear, even though your fingertips are reaching forward? And again, wrapping left rib cage up. You might find an intense stretch to the right side of your body, maybe all the way down through your hip. What's happening to your left toes? Maybe gaze up toward the ceiling beyond your right bicep. Inhale, prepare. On the exhale, with a stronger core, lift all the way back up. Yes, ma'am. All right. Take your right hand behind you. Fingertips are faced away. So for me, it's gonna be about 12 inches. Sweep your left arm around, come up onto your left foot, right shin, and reach your arm above your head for a star gaze or pose. I prefer my palm to be down. You might choose palm up. Keep pressing through your right hand, fingertips spread wide. On your next exhale, you're gonna take that cycle back, bringing your hips down, swinging everything back around. Cool. We're gonna take Janu Trisasana, other side. So this time, your right leg extends, left foot, left knee is bent rather, foot to thigh, or if that's not quite working, go below. Adjust your body as you need. I don't think my body's ever practiced many times before. Inhale, lift up. You're going to pivot torso over to the length and leg, flex your toes towards your face, bring your arms as far as they go, and then drop them. And then inhale, lift up halfway, pull your heart a little bit closer to your toes, and then exhale. So, couple breaths, keep your head lifted, gaze at your feet, they're very beautiful. And then allow your head to drop. Forget about your beautiful feet. On your next inhale, lift up about halfway. And then exhale, release your posture. Come back up to seated, shoulders over your hips. We'll take the revolved version next. Inhale, lift your arms up. This time, pivot your torso more toward the left. Again, maybe for super flexy, it's like over your left leg. Not so much for me. You're going to lean over to the right. Let your hand land where it does. Scooch your right rib cage like it's going to point up towards the ceiling. Reach your left arm over your head if you'd like more intensity. If you're looking for even more intensity here, feel like your left hip is anchoring down more toward the mat as you rotate, maybe gazing up beyond your left bicep toward the ceiling. Notice if the pose, if something is like translated into your jaw, let that go. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, use your core to lift all the way back up. Awesome. Your left hand's already up to the side. Place it beyond your hip. Fingertips facing away from you. Sweep your right arm around. Come up onto your right foot. Left shin, reach your arms back. Start gazer. Maybe gaze back towards your back fingertips. To the lifted fingertips, rather. And then on an exhale, start to drop your hips, cycle your way back to where you began. Bend both knees. And then take, sure, take your hands back to your thighs again. We're gonna roll onto our back. So there is a little bit of core here to make this slow and controlled. Up to you if you wanna keep your hands to your thighs or if you just want to bring them out in front of you. Yogi's choice, take it all the way down. Okay. We're gonna take a hand to toe posture. Um, I'm gonna be doing a hand to thigh because I think that's a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more um, 
just a little bit more restful for me. So I'm gonna first start by bringing my right knee up and my hand to the back of my thigh. I'm gonna extend my right leg towards the ceiling. If I'm feeling okay here, this is good, or release your left leg out in front of you. Again, neither one of your legs really needs to be straight. It might happen that they are. Flex your right toes towards your face. Point your heel toward the ceiling, even if your leg isn't straight. Slide your shoulder blades down your back. I know that sounds crazy, but you're going to press your back, hat back your head to the mat, lift up your, your back, slide your shoulder blades down and away, and then come down again. So you're kind of taking your shoulders out of this. Use your hands to gently draw your leg in closer towards you. Keep flexing your toes towards your face. What's going on with your left leg? Maybe you can let it get soft. Wiggle a little bit if you need to help. Release that tension, your leg comes back up toward the ceiling. Okay, turn your toes to the right, then let your leg just drop out to the side. Take your hand to your thigh. I like to take my left hand either to my, to my belly or my left hip to remind myself not to like roll away. Then take your hand to the outside of your right leg, lift your leg up toward the ceiling, bend your knee slightly, and we're going to take a twist. So you're gonna take left hand to the outside of right thigh, and then bring your knee across your body. Your right arm is out to the side to provide you with some support. If this feels okay, press through your left elbow, lift up your shoulders, and then intensify the twist by adjusting your shoulders and then send your gaze over to the right. Bring your head back up to center. Take your knee back up to center. Bend both knees, pull both knees into your chest. If it feels okay on your back, you can roll a little bit from side to side. A looser grip on your knees is gonna give you more of a massage towards your, your bum, your hips. Tighter grip is going to give you a more of a massage in your hip flexors. Maybe a little bit of both. and then come back to center. So this time, right foot places on the mat. Extend your left leg up toward the ceiling, take your hands to the backs of your thigh. Again, bent knee, straight knee, flex your foot. This is feeling fine, you stay right here. If you'd like, walk your leg out and let it go flat, let it go a little bit soft. Your left toes are still active. You're going to use your hands to gently draw your leg closer to you like your toes a touch above your head. Again, make sure your shoulder blades have just drawn down away from your ears a little bit more. A little bit of shaking here is okay. Just be nice to yourself. Okay, then loosen that tension. Maybe start to let go of your leg a little bit. Turn your left toes out to the left. Then drop your leg out to the left. Take your hand to your thigh to help. And this is just like not working for you at all. You can take your hand to the outside to lift it up to provide support. Again, I like to place my right hand onto my right hip, thigh, something to just remind myself down. Flex through your left toes. Relax through your right. And then on the next side, you're going to take your leg back up towards the center. Bend that knee. And again, we're going to take that supine twist. Right hand to the outside of your thigh so you can draw your leg across your body. Option to stay right here. If you want to go a little deeper, press through your elbows. Lift up, slide, twist a bit toward the left. Your left arm is out wherever it needs to be to provide you with a counterbalance. And then send your gaze toward your left hand or beyond toward the left. On an exhale, take your head back up toward the uh, eyes facing toward the ceiling. Take your hand to your right knee, bring it back up. Recenter, pull both knees into your chest once again. You might choose hands behind thighs if that feels better than hands on shins. Little rock from side to side. 
And then also, if you would like an option for happy baby. So send your feet up toward the ceiling, reach to the insides of your knees for the outsides of your feet. You might have to hike your hips up in order to reach. Flex your feet, press your heels up toward the ceiling, bringing your knees down towards your armpits. And then maybe even here, rock from side to side. If you'd like to get super playful, you might start to straighten one leg and then the other. For the record, this is one of those poses when I started doing yoga. I was like, how could anybody ever in the history of ever find this to be pleasant? I mean, I still kind of feel that way, at least. We all got our thing. Okay, if you've taken that bind in your happy baby, release the bind, pull your knees gently in towards you once again. Place your feet into the mat. We're gonna take a bridge flow. Your arms are alongside your body, and then wiggle your fingertips and notice about where your heels are. You want to walk your heels closer into you so you can barely, barely graze the backs of your heels. Make sure that you've got your chin pointed up toward the ceiling. Press through your feet. On an inhale, lift your hips up, reach your arms up and back so the backs of your palms press against the mat behind you, perhaps. And then on an exhale, you're gonna roll your spine all the way back down, take your arms back to where they began alongside your body, maybe everything touches down at the same time. Inhale, lift up your hips, reach your arms up and back, reach your tailbone for the backs of your knees, squeeze your bum a little bit for support, exhale, roll it all the way back down, take your palms down. Start to move in this um, little bit of a flow to your own breath. Remember to press down through your back as well as you lift. Two more cycles of breath. And after that second time, you're back with your knees bent, your uh, back on the mat. We're gonna take one more supine twist. So extend left leg out, your right knee is bent, simply draw your knee across your body. If you would like, adjust your hips, adjust your shoulders, right arm comes out to the right, Send your gaze over to the right, allow your eyes to lose their focus, maybe even close your eyelids. When you're ready, start to bring your knee back to center, head back to center. Extend right leg out in front of you, let it go flat onto your mat. Pull your left knee in towards your chest and then draw your knee across your body to the right. Adjust your hips if you need, adjust your shoulders, left arm comes out. And if comfortable, gaze out toward the left. Soften your gaze, lose your focus, close your eyes. On the next one, when you're ready, when this feels about the same as the other side, take your head and your knee back to center. One final time, pull your knees into your chest. Maybe taking your hands around your shins, maybe even pulling your forehead up towards your knees. Give yourself a final embrace. Take a really deep breath in whatever position you've chosen. And then exhale, let it go, let everything go soft. The final posture of this class is Shavasana, corpse pose. Extend your legs out in front of you. And then separate your feet so that they're maybe as wide as your yoga mat. Let your feet flop out to the sides. Like you did earlier, maybe press through your heels, lift up your hips, slide your tailbone down, and then flatten out. If your low back feels weird, you can always place like a blanket or pillows underneath your knees for a little support. 
Allow your palms to rest up. Arms alongside your body, but bring your arms out a little bit wider, kind of starfish style. Maybe once or twice, rock your head from side to side. And then come back to center. So your head is facing straight up toward the ceiling. If there's any other movements you need, adjustments, clothing or props, please take them now. And in this pose, we're going to begin to let go. Allow the soles of your feet to become soft. Your feet fall out to the sides. Let your kneecaps drop. Let your thighs be heavy. Pelvis rests. Your belly is soft. Your shoulders release back. Upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, backs and hands, palms, fingertips, all releasing. Separate your bottom jaw from the top and release your tongue from the roof of your mouth. Let your cheeks feel hollow, eyelids closed, heavy eyes, smooth forehead. Without moving, once again, become aware of your physical body. Without opening your eyes, what can you observe? What can you observe about your breath? Recognize your current state doesn't have to be assigned good or bad. Just bring some awareness there. And then as your breath becomes more full, your exhales lengthier, gently draw your thoughts back to the dedication that you set for this practice. And then start to find some movements in your extremities, starting with your toes, your fingertips, your wrists, your ankles, allowing those to become larger and larger, slowly coming out of this posture just as carefully as you entered it. And when you're ready, you'll roll over onto one side. Traditionally, this is your right side. And then just pause for a few moments, recognizing this transition out of this pose that we call corpse pose. And then with a soft gaze or with eyes closed, make your way to a seated posture of your choice. This might be on a prop, in Sukhasana, sitting on your knees or something else. Come to a place where you can simply reflect. On your next inhalation, reach your arms out and up, palms press above your head, and on an exhale, take your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows for clarity of thought. Then down to your lips for clarity of speech, and then move them to your heart for clarity of action. Bow your head to your heart, a symbol of honor and respect and of gratitude. Your gratitude to yourself for this practice, to each other, for this community. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing this part of your life with me. 
In the name of the highest good. Namaste. Taking everybody off the mute. Thank you.